Hey, welcome. This is The Process. My name is Dr. John Bush. Uh, we have arrived at lef Lesson 50 here. Uh, who would have thought? Uh, this is continuing my team focus of Dallas and Denver this time. Uh, please go back and start with the beginning. This is all in alphabetical order, not by my preference of teams. And everything is designed to help you win your fantasy football drafts. Uh, we definitely use metrics here around this uh, environment. Uh, uh, and then we analyze the data, right? So we uh, f have some questions and we try to use metrics to give us insight into those questions uh, and break things down from a top to bottom aspect. That's, uh, as a scientist, that's how I do things and I study and, and uh, my fantasy football metrics and whatnot using that same process. So that's why I called it the process. So you can tag along with me here. Uh, just to let you know, I've been doing this uh, metrics for quite some time, uh, years, and uh, this year I decided let's try to throw it out and make it on YouTube and, and videos, and, and uh, I post this in my professor's classroom at fakepigskin.com. Please visit, lots of interesting people there different insights. Uh, I've been writing and being a part of that for quite some time and uh, suggest you hang out there with uh, some of those folks. Uh, good crew there. So again, we're at Lesson 50. Uh, again, doing this. So this has never been for fame and fortune because uh, I basically got neither from my 10 years in fantasy football here. Of course, I don't jump up and down and wave the flag and woo-woo every time something goes my way or I make a good call. I'm quiet. I sit in the background, uh, the old barracuda floating in the weeds, ready to grab a bargain and, and crush a league and then slip back down. I do not do this to toot my own horn. There's plenty of those that you can hang and listen to, and uh, they'll blow their horn all the time. So continuing then, Dallas and Denver. Needless to say, Dallas, with Dak being injured, certainly muddies the water for 2020. Uh, what you're seeing here is the conference CNF, it's uh, NFC East, the team, the position, this is fantasy point average of the position 2016 to 20, and here's adding all those fantasy point averages together. We get the grand total, and then we see uh, what are the favored positions, and in Dallas over five years, it's certainly been uh, the running backs and uh, the wide receivers here. Tight ends uh, have been fourth and quarterbacks actually have uh, uh, been an issue. But I think uh, since 2019 with Dak Prescott back, we actually saw an uptick. He got injured, so we saw a decline in 2020. Uh, one would predict that we're going back here to the 2019 level. Just kind of, that's what I'm thinking. That's what most people should be thinking. I also uh, note that the running backs, uh, Zeke Elliott, was doing quite well in 2019. We had a decline there. The tight ends also declined. And so with so many declined, uh, there was an uh, overuse of the running back, I'm sorry, the wide receivers, and they showed a five-year top. And by the way, the blue circle is a five-year metric top there. 
So Dak took in 2019, great year. Uh, certainly wide receivers did well, but uh, they did better last, uh, you know, in 2020 versus 19. So if we use 2019 as a view of what 2021 will bring us, uh, we are definitely going to be jumping back on the uh, Zeke Elliott uh, bandwagon and look for maybe some depth in the uh, running back. And I think tight ends, there's going to be a bargain or two uh, late in the drafts. I'm kind of seeing that. The thing with the wide receivers, lots of activity, but uh, uh, the problem is there's there's a lot of mouths to feed. Quite the crew, certainly with uh, Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup. Now they're cutting the pie three ways, and uh, good for the team, but harder for fantasy players there on that so we'll see how that that does but it definitely uh doesn't skew value to one of the three at all kind of muddies the water in a committee type situation okay so let's continue here and i graphically put this so i'm going to think that the red is representing 2021 Okay, if that's the case, we're going to have a nice quarterback, running back, tight end, wide receiver kind of thing. I think most people would think Dallas should be competitive for the Super Bowl, the playoffs, etc. In the East, I think, uh, you know, probably should win the conference. But, you know, that's kind of common knowledge we'll see how everybody's injuries with Prescott shake out but right now since this is you know we have to kind of read the tea leaves that's where I'm thinking at this point so that's uh, the assumptions so I'm kind of ignoring 2020 because of the skewed nature of uh, that season so five-year average, again, we saw uh, wide receivers at a nice 39 and uh, running backs at 26. Last year, we skewed a little high with the uh, wide receivers at 44. We saw a decline uh, in running backs, I think, because Zach wasn't there. And so we had a decline and then uh, an increase. And I think that shuffles to probably look uh, closer to the 2019 numbers, okay? So what is uh, PPR looking at uh, uh, ADP levels kind of right now towards the end of, of May here? Uh, quarterback Dak is fifth round. That I think is a good price it's a fair price I've been taking him as my quarterback one okay in best balls Zeke is the seventh running back that may be a little low if we can if he can bounce back but it's another year of age so that I'm kind of conflicted there I'll take him if Nobody else is near their, uh, the seventh pick. I'll, I do like some other plays there, but I won't hesitate to take him if, uh, you know, other selections are gone at that point. Pollard, I think, is worthy of a handcuff spot. I don't know in round nine, though. I would like to have him in round 10 or, or later, but I guess round nine is fair, but I don't want fair. Jarwin, I think is round 14 is, should be a bargain. Okay, should be. 
Uh, Schultz, I think, is not listed here, but he could be a surprise as well, depending on the situation. So I think a solid tight end to best ball play for tight end. I, I do like that. Wide receivers from Dallas. The conundrum is here. The public cannot pick Cooper versus Lamb, so they kind of say they're both a fourth round, just slightly different values. Uh, I think either one in round five is the play. Gallup at round 11 or 12 is the play. So I, I guess I'll take Lamb close to the his price. I would wait on Cooper, I think, just because Lamb is his age. He's ascending. I think most everybody's awake to that as well. So I don't think you're going to. I think if you want to take him in redrafts, I would get into redrafts early before the hype really hits because I do believe he could ascend past Cooper uh, later in the summer. So this may be his low point right now. So I would get him if, 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 if you're looking for him and you think he could be a third round pick a solid wide receiver to play, then uh, you probably need to collect him now. I would not wait till August or September. I don't think you're going to get bargains. I think you'll pay a higher price. So it's one of those situations, and I don't know what is this, about the fifth or sixth uh, lesson on the, the teams. I haven't said this about anybody uh, I think now you go in, you, you collect him at this price or better, but I think later in the summer, I would not, you know, focus on the high. So that would mean Cooper would probably shift to be a closer bargain. If Lamb jumps over Cooper later, say August, then Cooper may be the play. So I think I would watch those two. They have a lot of these softwares. You can, you know, follow trends on ADPs and whatnot. I would definitely, and even Gallup, I would definitely follow these people. Gallup may be the forgotten one and worth a good wide receiver for play. So I would not uh, forget about him as well. He could be a good spot start or a, a, a best buy uh, pick. So I guess what you're hearing is I'm fairly optimistic about this crew. It's just finessing the price I'm paying. Okay, I guess is the take home, which is probably what, you know, most people that have been playing for a while do. If you're new to the game, that's that next step where you're, it's kind of like, it's a good play, but it's the wrong price, right? Good car, but it's too high, right? Jaguar, love it, but I can't, I can't pay the price. So uh, I guess that's where I'm at with uh, the wide receivers in Dallas. I do, I'm optimistic, it's just pick your spots. Here's the five-year versus 2020 usage. Again, we declined everybody, but running back, if you look at the blue versus the red. The triangles are the differences and the zero point, zero differences. So decline differences are below the pink line, and we see QB, RB, and tight end all declined because Dak wasn't there. And in balance then, uh, Dalton and whatnot went toward the wide receivers to, you know, skewed. I think they'll come back and some of the other ones will adjust. So I think 2019 is the key to sorting out these positions.
but here's the actual metrics from 2020. Okay, that was good. Spent too much time in Dallas. This is AFC West. We're talking Denver. Uh, quarterback, Drew Locke, people crab on him. He did pretty good, 280. The uh, QBs did, did pretty good. And you're saying, well, why aren't they talking? Because that's a sucky number, right? And notice the last five years have been a suck fest. Wide receivers have been the skew here in Denver. Uh, the golden age for wide receivers, 2016. Oh, I forgot to mark. Uh, uh, oh, 2017, so I don't know what I'm thinking. Okay, running backs, 2018, and quarterback and tight ends. Noah Fant is a play. Look at that. That's a nice comeback here. Uh, running backs declined almost a five-year low. Er, er. So there's issues there. Wide receivers. There's a crew, and that cuts their value. Let's see what, what, we, what we saw here. So I think if you look, quarterback has been fairly steady, which is not so strong. The decline in running backs, Fant has been great. Hello. He might be a late tidy in one for you. Wide receivers. A little bit of a decline. Okay, so I guess I'm bullish on the tight end, and that's about it right now. Because who is the quarterback? So there's lots of talk that Denver wants Aaron Rodgers right now. He's not there. Who knows? This is the five-year average has been skewed to the pass. And 2020 was also continued to be at about 40% there. Uh, tight ends really did well. Running backs really declined. Okay. So, Melvin Gordon, Javante Williams, and Boone. The public says Gordon is is worth twice Williams and almost three times Boone as far as value. I think you want Gordon is a good play in best ball and a good wide receiver. I'm sorry, running back two in best ball. Redrafts. Uh, I'd want round six. Williams is a surprise, but given the environment, I just don't know if the young running back, what happens. I guess if there's an injury, he'd be an interesting handcuff. So you might pick him up in round 12. Boone is for sure around 15 or later. He's, he's a stab, even in best ball. Noah Fant, sixth round, almost seventh. I think that's a good price. I think I would take him there. If I'm playing late round tight end, Fant would be one of my plays. He would probably be a streaming option. I think if I miss on the top two or three, then I think Fant would be a great use as a streamer with somebody else to flip them back and forth in a streaming uh, play. And notice I didn't even rate the quarterback because I don't know what's going on. So I just, I'll let you figure that out later. The wide receivers are 7, 8, and 14. So Patrick is way past. So it's 1A, 1B, and wide receiver 4 type or 5. Sutton and, and, and Judy. Hmm. Public says Sutton, but there's only a round difference. I think I would take 
if I'm taking one, I would I think you'd have to take Judy. Just you pay less. Sutton may be too expensive. Yes, a round later, so eighth and ninth pick on either one of those is a play. But right now, if if I can get them at where they're going, I would I would take Judy. Patrick would be a best ball stab only. Okay, wide receiver five only. Okay, which is fine. I mean, you need you need some people that could surprise. Depends on the quarterback. If Aaron Rodgers is is in Denver, these numbers go wacky. Fant moves up. Sutton and Judy will move up around. So there'll be a sixth, seventh play. I'm not sure the wide receivers will, I mean, the running backs will go up. So people will get a little crazy. Come August, and if, if Rodgers is there by then, I think uh, you won't get seventh and eighth pick on Judy and Sutton and Fant in rounds, almost round seven. I think you'll have to pay a round higher price. If you get Locke, you may get some bargains here. Okay. If you get Locke, I wouldn't expect a dramatic change from last year, I guess is what I would try to say. Okay. So, Fant hits me as the play. I bargain hunt with the wide receivers. Mildly intrigued with Williams as a handcuff play. Would take Gordon in best ball. Love to get him at round six. Okay. Do I have another slide? I think I'm done. No, forgot this slide. So, looking at the differences here in Denver, we see Fant is the only play here. Look at that. That's a nice increase. Everybody else declined. Well, quarterback did a little bit. Eh. So, I think I've pretty much reiterated what these uh, differences are showing us here. I can, I can fall in line with what this is saying. I think I covered that. Okay, this is the end of lesson 50. Wow, who would have thought? Come back, the process, the process never really stops, right? You can never do enough research for me personally. Keep, keep digging every day, digging every day. I think you should be drafting every day, okay? That's why I use best balls. I find cheap best balls and do it every day. I got 16 best balls going right now. Okay. I will continue. I'll probably have 100 uh, or more by the time we hit August. And then redrafts, I'll, I'll have about 50 leagues at least, maybe more. Certainly not less. Okay. This is Dr. Bush, The Process, signing off. Come back.